Okay, so first uh, I'm Rodrigo. I will be talking about how uh, I try to resurrect this web browser. And it just happens to be the 25 uh, year anniversary since the, the beginning. A bit about me, uh, I'm a computer scientist at the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. We basically do HPC. And I was not uh, involved with the with the release. Uh, sorry, with the the development of Dilo. Uh, I was just using it uh, in a very old computer. And I mostly program in C, so uh, I tried to avoid C++. But Dilo has some some parts in C++. And I I think that simplicity is beautiful, and we should try to make things simpler. So well. If you never use the law, you don't know what it is. It's a very lightweight uh, graphical web browser, and it has a, its own rendering engine. It's not a Chrome or Firefox uh, wrap, and we only support a subset of HTML and CSS, and we don't support JavaScript at all, and probably will never will. And yeah, this project is for <coughs> since 1999, and. The whole presentation will be done in Dilo itself. And we can talk later about how this happened with all JavaScript. So first, the objectives of the projects is to lower the access or the barrier to entry of the web. Because you know not everyone can have a, a nice computer to load all the JavaScript. So I think it is nice to make people, regardless of your uh, economical budget, be able to access the web. And we also try to really protect user privacy, so we don't have cookies enabled by default. There's no JavaScript, there's no telemetry, and there's no companies funding the project either. And also the, um, the code of the Dilo web browser tries to be very efficient. And tries to also be kind of easy to use, but we'll see. Okay, so what happened with the project? You can see here the number of commits over time, and we still have some missing data that they could not recover. So in 2016, uh, Sebastian, that was the main rendering engine developer, passed away uh, around this, this line here. And you can see that uh, after that time, uh, Jorge, which, which was the lead developer since the beginning of the project, uh, stop uh, being active, uh, so the project kind of halted there. And a bit later, uh, we lost the DNS, and with that, we lost the email system, the website, the repo, the mailing list, the book tracker, so everything went. And the only thing that uh, was released was the la latest release 3.0.5, which uh, since a very long time was the only release available in all the repos. So in 2024, I tried to resurrect the, the project. Uh, wait a moment. I have a bit of a problem here. Okay. So in 20, 2024, I tried to resurrect it and I tried to get all the copies of the source code and everything that I could. I set up a GitHub repo and a, mail system and a mailing list and also some donations and some channel in ELC. And after a bit of work, I did uh, some tests to pass the uh, automatically because Dilo was not never really tested properly. Uh, it was, everything was done manually. So I added a CI pipeline in GitHub. So now we are running the test every time. And we also added support for OpenSSO along with embed TLS. And I released the 3.1.0 after nine years, almost. And hopefully it was <laughs> quickly allowed. <laughs> Thank you. And about two weeks ago, I also did another release, 3.0.2, which added some support for especially math in Wikipedia uh, and WebP, and also some other niceties. Uh, we can now 
open URLs with custom commands or make a text bigger or, or smaller with the zoom and so on. But let's stop talking and let's see a real-time demo if everything works. So, uh, as I told you, I was using this computer. I don't know if you can see in the, in the camera, but it's a 15-year-old CPU, Atom, very, very basic. It only has one core and two hardware threads. Uh, the cache is really terrible. And RAM is like 2 gigabytes and 4 gigabytes of swap. And I bought it second hand for 30 euros. Um, so first thing that I wanted to show you is Dilo cannot play audio or video. So what we do is we offload that to any other tool that you like. For example, here is a YouTube video. And if you try to open it, you will see this is what you see without JavaScript. But that's fine because we can just click on the link and say open and I configured this MPB so we can just uh, do this. And now wait for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so in the meanwhile, I will show you two uh, other links. For example, this is a jail link that you can see here. And it just opens uh, coordinates or something and you can offload to another program. For example, this one shows you immediately the map of Fosden and you don't have to open JavaScript or Google Maps or whatever. Uh, okay, so this is the video. And this is Jorge, the lead developer of, of Dilo, back in 2005 doing another presentation. He also came to force them. So, okay, nice. As you can see, you can see the, the video anyway. Okay, so another thing that I want to talk is uh, Dilo can be extended with plugins. And this means that you can do anything that you like, basically, as long as you can program it in any language and expose it like a pipe. It's similar to CGI. Uh, one of the things that we do is we support other protocols like Gemini or Gopher. For example, here's a page in Gemini, and we just open. And you see that uh, the protocol is Gemini, but it's rendered because it gets translated into something like HTML. And it's uh, just like a a page. And this is another example of a very old Gopher servers. If you know this, you can read everything in Gopher as well. And another thing that I wanted to show you is, for example, Dilo can be nice to read documentation. For example, the Dilo manual page, as in, as in man, you can just type man on the website. Uh, the, the page and you can read it like a, like a normal website. And this is fine if you want to read like a very long, uh, for example, a tutorial of Git, which is being rendered from the disk. And I want to also show you the file pluing that opens a file in the local file system, which happens to be the whole source code of the manual pluing, which is just like this uh, 50 lines of shell script, which is very simple, <laughs> I think. And I wanted to show you as well this uh, page, which is a Guardian article. And you will see that uh, we can kind of load it, but it has a lot of garbage in top that I don't know why they put all of these things. And here you can get the text finally. So instead of reading this, terrible page, you can just uh, offload it to this other plugin that uses the reader view tool, which is a, a program that extracts the text, and you can read everything here. Okay, so here are other examples of dotted websites that you probably know. Most of them don't work, especially Google now decided not you now require JavaScript. Okay. And here's another list of websites that uh, they actually work, and I, I will open some of them so yeah, you can see that another web is possible. And I wanted to show you as well this, uh, these other search engines that render mostly documents, that, uh, mostly pages that are good to be opened with Dilo. And you can see that, for example, this is a very nice um, 
wiki style page with uh, several types of content that can be rendered perfectly well. And this is like this uh, uh, kind of search engine, which is only indexing uh, simple websites. Okay, so let's see if I have a bit of time to talk about performance and complexity. There is this problem over time that is getting worse that we have two tires of devices. Expensive devices are getting better performance, but cheap devices are not so well. And there is this gap opening, so we have an increasing problem. And I measure this uh, little browser uh, opening a, a page without the browser opening, which is this column here, and just opening a new tab. And the, the time that it takes is CPU time. So you can see that if this, comp this computer here tries to open a tab or a, a page in Firefox, it takes 80 seconds. Which is terrible. <laughs> and you can see that with Hilo, I only take like one second or a fraction of a second. And also the, the complexity of the code base, the um, whole DLOG source code fits in a single floppy, which is only 71k lines, compared with Firefox or Chrome, which are millions of lines, and the tarball size is gigantic. And apart from being easy to use in all computers, DLOG can also be uh, edited and hack it in all computers. So if you have uh, this computer, you can build it in less than seven minutes, and you only require 130 megabytes of RAM. Uh, well, that's about it. Just wanted to say that please remember that not everyone has a good computer or fast network, uh, but I think everyone should be able to access the web. And uh, please allow people to choose if they want to enable JavaScript or just fall back to HTML. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. What are your future plans for Dillo? Well, the the question. what are the future plans for Dillo? Um, I will try to make some time to maintain, well, I didn't say, but I'm doing this in my free time, so <laughs> I have only a limited amount of time to address it, but it will be really nice if we can get more people involved, uh, especially developers familiar with C and C++. So I, I cannot provide a one but... Are there any web standards that you want to uh, maybe implement? Okay, so... Uh, any web standards I want to implement, I will try to uh, improve the support for HTML and, C++, uh, and CSS first. More questions? Uh, yeah, in the back. Okay, yeah. So um, I understand that JavaScript will not be implemented because of many reasons, uh, but still the support for CSS is very limited. So what are the plans for CSS? Is it just it's, it's very simple or is it going to improve? Okay. So if the question is, is if I am going to try to improve CSS support or yeah. keep it simple? Yes, I will try to support us those features that prevent us from rendering websites, basically. Okay. Yes? You mentioned there is already some C++ code in the code base. Have you removed them or did you start to remove them? Okay, so the question is if we can remove C++ code. And no, because the whole rendering engine is written with C++ and it's a mess. <laughs> And plus uh, FLTK is written in C++, so it's really hard to remove. Next questions. Yeah. Does Infidious work? Sorry? Does the in Infidious work? The user I, I cannot hear. Does Infidious work? Invidia. It's a YouTube problem. I had a problem with Vias earlier. Mm -hmm. Videos, yes. Videos? HTML, YouTube content. No. Uh, do you have to open them in some, some kind of program? Uh, There's no video at all. Oh, uh, no video at all. Okay. Yeah, I think it would download the same way you showed the YouTube link. Maybe. Yes. I think it would just download some video. Ah, okay, right. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, yep. Another question. Does Hilo support rendering text from right to left? Or what's the support of Unicode? Very poorly. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, question is if Hilo supports er, uh, text from right to left. Uh, not not really, but it will improve on the uh, next versions of F FLTK.
Okay, so if anyone wants to come back, I have some floppy disks with the low uh, with last release. Thanks.